Now, we've been covering the story here about Ukraine, of course, and the Russian incursion into Crimea initially and then eastern Ukraine. And we noticed that there was a lot of commenters who would attack us uh, and say, we've got the story all wrong and we're uh, terrible and that, in fact, the Russians are right and the Ukrainians are doing propaganda. Now, some of them I recognize because they're old viewers and I take them seriously and I pay attention to what they're saying and I take in that data. Others I did not recognize. There was a lot of new folks coming in telling me how great Russia was and how it was all the West's fault and Ukraine's fault and that we didn't understand the situation. And we thought, hmm. Well, it turns out now BuzzFeed has written a great story about someone who has hacked the hackers. They are reporting about a Russian, quote, troll farm that has now also been described as a troll army. The Russians have released the Kraken on the internet. And it's a propaganda Kraken. It's fascinating. So uh, we've got these guys uh, that are now going on all these different websites, whether it's they're conservative like Fox News or The Blaze or Huffington Post and Politico, uh, et cetera. They're, and what they're trying to do is they're trying to mold public opinion. But uh, there's a Russian hacker collective uh, that is apparently in charge of this, but there's another group called Anonymous International that is not necessarily part of what we know is anonymous that then leaked about this troll army, found out all these emails, and BuzzFeed says all their previous uh, leaks, Anonymous Internationals, have proven to be correct, okay? So when it gets in this world of internet propaganda, it is exceedingly difficult to see who's doing propaganda on which side. And it's not like the Ukrainians don't do propaganda, it's not like the West doesn't do propaganda. Of course they do, right? In this case, Anonymous International has been right about every other instance, and here they are saying, you can read it for yourself, all these uh, different emails and documents about how the Russians have raised this troll army. And so, let's tell you what their goals are and, and their methods, and down to the numbers, this is what I find really interesting. They explain on BuzzFeed, on an average working day, the Russians are to post on news articles 50 times. So they have these quotas. Each blogger is to maintain six Facebook accounts, publishing at least three posts a day, and discussing the news groups at least twice a day. Then they go on to say, by the end of the first month, they are expected to ha have won 500 subscribers and get at least five posts on each item a day. And then they go to every different part of the internet, so they've got their blogs, they leave the comments on the sites, on the channels, etc. And then they go on Twitter too. On Twitter, the bloggers are expected to manage 10 accounts with up to 2,000 followers and tweet 50 times a day. Now, this appears to be uh, put together by the Internet Research Agency. They uh, look like they're near St. Petersburg in Russia. Uh, and their overall budget is $10 million in 2014. It's not to say that they spend the whole $10 million on this particular program, but they're using some Russian students and that's why some of the posts that you'll see will be in a little bit of broken English. And what's funny is that they try to connect with the American and Western audience by doing things like cursing and coming up with questionable titles for themselves. First, let me tell you what their themes are. Their themes are American Dream and I Love Russia. Well, boy, that's subtle. Really subtle, uh, <laughs> couldn't tell where you're coming from there. I believe in American dream, I love Russia. You should love Russia with me. Okay, great, so what are some of their handles? This I like. Handkerchief, Gay Turtle, The Ghost of Marius the Giraffe, The Left Breast, The Black Breast, and simply Ass. <laughs> See, what I love what that says about what they think about the internet, they're like, Ah, the internet, it's full of left ass and left breast and I don't know, just make up something vulgar and put it on there and it'll seem realistic. So here's this guy, oh let's look, it's left breast, and, yeah, you know, of course, he said, oh look at this, the Ukrainians are all wrong, the Russians are all right. So part of the reason that the Russians have launched this is Putin hates the internet. He thinks that it's a CIA project. Well, and he thinks, well, if the CIA invented the internet to, you know, uh, to infiltrate the whole world. 
well, I will infiltrate the internet and use it for my own propaganda purposes. Now, he's trying to shut down the internet in 18 different ways in Russia. For example, if you're uh, someone who has over 3,000 followers uh, in Russia, you have to register with the government. Okay, those are uh, bloggers. Uh, they've shut down a lot of the people who are opposed to them on the internet in, in, uh, in Russia itself. And they think, okay, good, we control our own internet, and then we'll do like we think the CIA is doing, and we'll put out propaganda to the rest of the world. Now, does the CIA do propaganda on the internet? It's certainly possible. I don't discount that at all. In fact, we've shown you how some of the private contractors got hired by the US government to do propaganda against its enemies, including uh, Americans that they disagreed with. So there's a lot of that going on on the internet. But it, I, the idea that the CIA invented the internet to spread knowledge and information to everybody, and that was a devious plot, well, if it was, it was so devious that it actually turned out to be great. It actually went so far that it actually informs on all of the governments, which is, of course, what we love. Now, back to the troll farm and their armies. It's Leonid Brzezinski. He's the media executive and uh, Bloomberg View columnist. And he says, what, you think crazy Russians all learned English in mass and went off to comment on articles? If it looks like Kremlin shit, smells like Kremlin shit, and tastes like Kremlin shit, too, then it's Kremlin shit. I like that. <laughs> That's a guy who is an expert on Russia who doesn't mince his words. He's like, yeah, they didn't all just magically pop out of the woodwork and be like, oh yeah, here's, here we are with our broken English, mobbing all these sites and these video channels, etc. at the same time. Of course it's not a coincidence. And now Vasily Gatov, he's the former head of Russia's state's Newswire Media Analytics Laboratory. Someone sold the thought that Western media, which specifically have to align their interests with their audience, won't be able to ignore saturated pro-Russian campaigns and will have to change the tone of their Russia coverage to placate their angry readers. So, uh, here's what they miscalculated. Our mainstream media doesn't give a damn about their audience. So they're like, oh, is that what our audience says? <laughs> <laughs> we'll read a tweet or two. So I think you've greatly miscalculated how much our media actually cares. So that was part of the reason so they can get the mainstream media then to turn around and say, maybe Russia not so bad. And finally, we go to Pavel Chikov. He's a member of Russia's Presidential Human Rights Council. And he says, the internet has become the main threat, a sphere that isn't controlled by the Kremlin. That's why they're going after it. Its very existence, as we know it, is being undermined by these measures. So that is really interesting. So the campaign is to put Russian propaganda out there with your army of trolls, which sounds fun, uh, and then uh, to try to also trick the mainstream media into thinking that they're real and give you more positive coverage. But then third of all, to undermine the internet itself. Putin hates the internet. And he thinks, look, if a byproduct of this is that you trust nothing on the internet, and you only trust the official news that my uh, supporters in Russia give you, great, mission accomplished. So as funny as parts of this Russian troll army story are, it's also quite dangerous. And it gives you a sense of what Putin's really up to and what he thinks about, unsurprisingly, press freedom and the internet. He thinks the internet might lead to press freedom, which would be a worst case scenario for him. Usually people who are on the right don't try to hide the truth. Okay, by the way, Russian troll army on this video, commence.